Hey, you there. Just want to say thanks very much for watching. But if you want more of this stuff, why don't you go to Kermit and Mayo's Take, the podcast, get it wherever you get your podcast, because there's like hours of this stuff and it's all fab. Get it from the podcast shop, just around the corner. No, you get it on your phone. Anyway, obviously the... Um, the directors are stepping up, as Alice mentioned, because the actors yeah. are on strike, so the director's coming. But what, what you get with a director usually is An someone, overview of the whole film. Yeah, but is someone who's so immersed and invested yeah, in the production, it, yeah. far more so, yeah. you know, with the greatest respect to all of these actors who are in the film. Yes. It's Alice Troughton's film. Yeah. She's the one that wants to sell it to you, and I think she did a, a, a good job. Yeah. I mean, she said that she's very proud of the whole team, proud of the film, and, well, she ought to be because it's it's very good. The tagline is who's teaching who, and the poster has got this pen, and there are ink blotches that look like they might be blood, but you're not quite sure. She was saying that they you know, they call it noir and talking about the Diana Dawes not. I mean, I have to say, for me, it's more of a whodunit, although the whodunit is not a murder. It's it's a different twist on whodunit. I mean, obviously, she was citing Sleuth. Incidentally, Branner remade Sleuth. That mm -hmm. was the, I mean, not well as it happened. It was not well received. Sleuth was written by Anthony Schaffer, who wrote Wicker Man, whose brother made Amadeus, Amadeus which is your favourite. Also... Anthony Schaffer worked on all those classic Christie adaptations like Death and the Nile. In fact, Anthony Schaffer's gravestone says on it the words, Great Artificer of Mysteries, which is a wonderful uh, okay, thing. Good. So I think we're definitely in whodunit territory. There's even a butler, as you said, uh, creeping quietly around doing slightly sinister things. But but whodunit, not as in who did a, a murder. The plot's got shades of everything. I mean, because... This, it's, it, there is a kind of recurrent trope literary thriller storyline. So you can see, you know, from Morvan Caller to Sleuth to Draftsman's Contract to that weird thing. Remember the Burnt Orange Heresy, which had Klaus Bang and Elizabeth Debicki and, and Mick Jagger in it. I think that came out during lockdown. So written with blackly sardonic humour by Alex McKeith and directed with real confidence by Alice Troughton, who, I mean, unsurprisingly, she she has a, you know, a long history of directing, but this is a very, very accomplished first feature. Darren McCormick, who was so good with uh, Emma Thompson in Good Luck to You, Leo Grand, is Liam Summers. Who... I just say at that point, he's also on your television at the moment because he's on the Sunday night uh, Woman in the Wall drama playing Detective Coleman a candy. And anyway, okay. he's very good in that. And he was just on No, no, he's, he's clearly very busy. And I don't think that's going to be changing anytime in the near future. I think we can all wave goodbye to the idea that we're going to be seeing him around because he is clearly on his way up. So, um, like I said, he's just to do the the plot again in case people haven't. So he is, he's Liam Summers. He's being interviewed about his breakout novel. And he's asked, where did it come from? And the camera looks at him and then it goes into a flashback. And then we see him arriving at a posh country home of this celebrated author, James Sinclair, who hasn't written a book for years, but is supposedly working on a new one. His motto, Sinclair's motto, is good writers borrow, great writers steal, which obviously is a, a fairly well-known phrase. And that motto tells us a key point. It is repeated several times in, in case you missed it. And um, it turns out that uh, the young man has written his thesis on Sinclair, but he doesn't want him to know, but he's been enlisted as a tutor for Bertie, the young son, played by Steve McMillan, to get him through his Oxford exams. He must get in, he must get in, but he's clearly traumatised by the loss of his brother. Julie Delpy is Sinclair's wife, Hélène, who's an art dealer, who essentially is dealing with Liam. And... Uh, there's a lot of kind of, you know, is he welcome here? It, it, does does Bert, Bertie is very, very offy with him. Meanwhile, the the great Richard E. Grant is playing Sinclair. I mean, it's a great role for him. He, it's the best he's, it's the best role he's had since 2018's Can You Ever Forgive Me, for which he was, you know, rightly uh, celebrated. He absolutely relishes it. Incidentally, he's in Emerald Fennell's new film, Saltburn, which is opening the LFF. So, I mean, he's, you know, and he's film festival. Yes, and he's right, you know, at the top of his powers. I think he's the thing that's great about him is he relishes the role of playing somebody who is pompous, but he does it without turning it into a caricature. And you have to feel that it is possible that this this person, this character, has been a great writer and has lost their mojo, but is still absolutely full of themselves and their knowledge. That whole thing that you cited about give me three good reasons why I can't. That sort of patrician overbearing, unpleasant, but without turning it into a caricature. Without, I mean, he also does some of the best drunk acting I've ever seen, which is, we always remark on it, the fact that Richard E. Grant does not drink, absolutely does not drink, cannot, is allergic to alcohol as far as I understand. Anyway, 
McCormick is the per- the perfect foil to him because essentially what you've got is you know one person being kind of big and grandiose and you know and absolutely full of themselves. Then on the other hand, you've got Darren McCormick being quiet and you know withdrawn to some extent. But he has a book that he's written and he kind of desperately wants his hero to read it, and his hero is very snotty until he discovers that this young man who's arrived at the house can fix his computer, and then suddenly they start having this kind of interplay between themselves in which it essentially you read mine, I'll read yours. And then everything starts to get kind of very twisted. The key plot point is that the book, the book that is being written by Sinclair is struggling with its ending. And I think you could make an argument that in terms of the way that the narrative goes with this the ending kind of ramps everything up into Melodrama. But then again, this brings it back to what I was saying about who done it. I mean, when was the last time you read an Agatha Christie in which the final chat wasn't ridiculous, wasn't like, I'm sorry, pardon, what? Mm. You know, and I like it because I think it is generically completely in keeping with with the genre that it's in. Isabel Waller-Bridge's score is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. All the time I was watching the film, I was making notes about the score, thinking I'm going to play this score in its entirety on Scarlet. To which your producer is saying, I don't think you are. I don't think you are. And I was saying, yes, well, it's my show. Of course, it isn't. It's hers. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It, it. it had this kind of wicked sense of humour. And I think it's absolutely right as well that it's about, you know, it's the, the sort of poison chalice of... Um, of mentorship, and it is about class, and and it's and it's absurd, particularly in its final act, but in a way that is completely in keeping with the Agatha Christie who done it sleuth murder mystery great artificer of mysteries. I mean, in the same way that the end of the Wicker Man is completely ridiculous, but kind of perfect. I Art- really enjoyed it. Artificer feels like an uncomfortable word, but it is obviously the right word. Right? Yeah, I, I grand artificer of mysteries is a, nice. an amazing thing to have in your grave. So anyway, congratulations to all involved. It's really good film and Richard E. Grant is boom. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? They are. And if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I I would. I have done. Excellent.